Please watch the full video and read the pinned comment before giving this a go yourself. There I have mentioned anything I forgot or got wrong in this video. This tutorial is for both the PC and Shack versions of Pavlov, and will always be up to date as the Pavlov mod kit won't be receiving any large updates that would change the basic process of making a mod. You will need Windows 10 or 11, no other operating systems will work. If you're on Linux, you can run the mod kit through a Windows virtual machine. The Epic Games Launcher with Unreal Engine 5.1.1. A minimum of 16 gigabytes of RAM, but preferably slightly higher to give some leeway. Any lower than 16, and you likely won't be able to compile your map. If you have exactly 16 gigabytes of RAM, you will likely need to close all other programs when uploading a mod. You do not need Pavlov installed on your PC to create and upload mods. In the Epic Games Launcher, go to Unreal Engine and Library. Click the plus symbol, then select 5.1.1. If you don't see 5.1.1, download 5.1 and you'll get an option to update it once installed. Make sure the following are ticked before clicking download. Starter content, engine source, and Linux. If you plan on uploading content for Pavlov Shack, you must also select Android. It might seem obvious to most, but using Unreal Engine, and specifically 5.1.1, is not optional. This is because the game was created on this engine version. The reason I'm mentioning this is because I've had people ask if they can use Unity or Blender to make maps instead of Unreal Engine. Go to the GitHub link in the pinned comment and download the zip. The link can also be found on the Pavlov Discord, which will be linked in the pinned comment. I advise waiting for Unreal Engine to finish installing before you download the mod kit from GitHub. Go to mod.io in your browser and create or sign into your account. This is required for uploading mods. Once you have done all of that, you will need to extract the mod kit into a location of your choosing. Make sure you actually unzip the mod kit. This might seem obvious to most people, but I've encountered several new modders in the past trying to launch the mod kit without unzipping the files. You must also make sure it's extracted directly into a local drive. You cannot have the mod kit saved in the cloud. After extracting, open pavlov.u project. This is how you will open the Pavlov mod kit. If you are prompted to choose an application to launch with, select Unreal Engine and set it as the default. If that doesn't work, you can also open projects from within the Epic Games Launcher. If it still isn't showing up, you can launch Unreal Engine 5.1.1 in the Epic Games Launcher and select the project files manually. The first time you open the mod kit, you will be prompted to accept an EULA. You must accept the EULA to use the mod kit. Once you've opened Unreal Engine, click on the Windows tab at the top left of the screen and make sure Pavlov Workshop is ticked. Drag the new window and merge it with the main window. Go to the Pavlov Workshop tab, then Account, and log into your mod.io account. I'm using the Unreal Engine 4 layout in my project. You can switch to this by clicking on Window on the top left, going down to Load Layout, then clicking UE4 Classic Layout. This is not required, but may help with following my guide. Once you are logged in, go to Create Mod. In Pavlov, you can create maps, content mods, and game modes all separately. In this video, I will just be showing how to create a basic map. If you want to make standalone content mods, my guide for that will be in the pinned comment. I advise finishing this tutorial before attempting content mods. Enter your map's name and description. You can edit these at any point, so type anything you want. Select Map. Clicking Create Mod will create your map's UGC folder. Return to the main tab and your newly created UGC will be open. The UGC folder is the folder for your map or mod's content. Every custom asset used in this map or mod must be included in this folder. If you save your assets outside of this folder, they won't be included when compiling, 
so they won't appear in game. You can have as many different UGCs within the same Pavlov project as you want. Each UGC is a different map or mod. Go to File, New Level, and select Basic, then Create. Delete Exponential Height Fog and Volumetric Cloud. Select Floor and Sky Sphere and set their movability to Static. Manually set Directional Light, Sky Atmosphere and Sky Light to Static. Pavlov only supports static lighting, so all lights must be set to Static. You are able to set your skylight to movable, however it's still better for performance to keep it static. If you're on PC, you can probably get away with a movable skylight. Click Save All, then decide your map's location and name. This is just the map's file, so you can name it whatever. It must be saved somewhere inside the UGC. Go to the Place Actors tab and add a Sphere Reflections Capture. Make it encompass your whole playable area. Make sure to build all reflections before uploading, or all your items and weapons will be dark and non-reflective. Go to Build, Build Reflection Captures. Since we can only use static lights, all lighting will need to be built manually. Go to Build, Build Lighting Only. Make sure your lighting quality is set to preview. This will keep build time and file size down, and in most cases you will not notice a difference. You should only ever use higher quality lighting builds on finished or near finished projects. In Place Actors, search for Pavlov Game Logic, then drag this into your level. Set the definition to your UGC's definition. Set global info class to pavlov underscore global info. Set player info class to pavlov underscore player info. Set player proxy class to pavlov underscore player proxy. Search for spawn and drag pavlov spawn into your level. Set the team ID to one for red 0 for blue, and minus 1 for either team. Tick special if this spawn is meant for an S and D map. If you want ladders in your map, search for ladder in place actors and place a Pavlov ladder. Make sure this is up against a flat object. Search for Kill Volume in Place Actors and drag a Pavlov Kill Volume into your level. Place this below your map so anyone who glitches through the floor will be killed instead of falling indefinitely. A Pavlov Mod's thumbnail must be 512 by 288 pixels. You can create this however you want. Your map's definition must stay in its default location. Moving it will likely cause your map to fail uploading. Open up your definition. Set the label to the name you want your map to have in game. Set thumbnail to your thumbnail. This is not required, so you can come back and do this whenever. Set map to the map you intend to upload to PC. If you want to upload a map to Shack, then set your map where it says Quest Map. If you want to upload to both Shack and PC, you can have a separate map for both or use the same between them. Set the compatibility tags for what game modes you want your map to support.
click Save All again to assure everything so far is saved. Go to the Workshop tab. Go to Upload Mod and select your UGC from the list. The window for uploading must be full screen or you likely won't be able to see the list of mods. If you're uploading for PC, tick Windows. If you're uploading for Shack, tick Android. You can tick both if you'd like to upload to both PC and Shack back to back. Share Mod Assets allows you to upload your UGC's project files. This option is only available for mods and not maps. This is not required and should only be selected if you are fine with your assets being shared publicly. You can view other people's mod assets in the Download Source Plugin tab. When ready, click Upload Mod. A console will appear and give some output for a few minutes. This console is the map compiling. Your first time compiling a new map will always take longer than normal. If the console keeps repeating the same string of text over and over, then you can cancel and forget uploading, as you likely don't have enough RAM to upload. When the console disappears, you will get an upload bar. Upload speeds entirely depend on your internet connection. If your upload fails, open the output log and look for the most recent red error. Here it will inform you of the error preventing your map from uploading. If you have an error that reads something similar to log temp error 20489, this would be because mod.io is an incompetent modding platform which has failed another user. If you have this error, all you can really do is restart Unreal Engine and try again, or wait and try another day. Using a VPN sometimes fixes the issue. Assuming your mod uploaded successfully, go to mod.io, then click on My Teams. Click Manage on your newly created map. Here you can edit how your mod appears on mod.io. The summary and name are the only two parts which affect how it appears in the in-game mod browser. The rest is just for mod.io. You will need to set your thumbnail on mod.io separately to the one in UE5. In order to load your map in game, you will need to click Go Live, which will make your map public. Unfortunately, there is no way to load it without it being public. So if you don't want an unfinished map being public, I'd suggest making it public temporarily each time you need to test it, then making it hidden again immediately after. If you're working on a project you don't want to announce publicly, I'd advise keeping the name and description vague until you're ready to release the map. Download your map in the mod browser and load it in a lobby. I suggest testing your map on Team Deathmatch. If you found this video helpful, a like and subscription would be appreciated.